Hello and welcome to JRPG, a story of Future Perfect. I'm Time Captain Evan, joined by, uh, as always, Space Corps Master Ryan McKinley. Hello. And Virtual Stowaway Matthew Maluski. Ooh. I'm going to fight this Beast Master. With my sword. He's, he's the boss. How's it going, you guys? Alright. Good. It's Good. fine. The Mossatar um, is kind of fearsome. Get Master Flesh by binding it with R. Okay. Get around here. Alright. Pull with oh force. Geez, 1995 was just a wash with J JRPGs. Alone. 1994 alone. Sorry. <laughs> what? Uh, 1994 alone was what? a wash of JRPGs. Oh, okay. Yeah. But then again, in 2013, we've got like 10, and most of them aren't JRPGs. So. Yeah. Ah! So uh, oh, this is, this is weird. <laughs> this is a weird way to fight a boss, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Are oh, you he's pulling shit off him? What's the deal? I, I am attaching my chain to him and then pulling back away from him, mm -hmm. and it's sliding me around. It's like uh, Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> yeah, actually, it kind of is. Come on. Come on. Come on. I have to build up the chain gauge, and when I do that, I can pull it out of him for maximum damage. <laughs> You got the fans now, Evan. I do. I always, I always find pulling out to be the most efficient way to. There we go. Yeah. Wah wah. Wah wah. Intercourse. <laughs> that's that's how I feel after intercourse. <laughs> wah 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 wah. Come on. There we go. Yeah. You got him. <laughs> That was easy. <laughs> Just fucking pull out his brain and take it. Feed it to your girl. I, I need I need this for my girlfriend, sorry. <laughs> Look, she's fucked up. Or not all girlfriend, right. you know, girl that's a friend, obviously. Yeah. yeah, it's that's all I meant by you don't know me. Yeah, I'm they're not trying to charm her with this. This is just part of the job description. <laughs> So that seemed like a fairly... That is a fight. really small brain. That guy must be like a T-Rex, you know? <laughs> uh, the master has been defeated, and the chain has regained some power. Oh, so my chain gauge went up. And I leveled up. Nice. How many levels can you get? Let's find out. Don't ask me. I Let's got... Find Let's figure it out. I got the unreadable old note, though. Read it. I can't. It's unreadable. 50 is the level cap. I'm sure 50? we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not that much. Oh, yeah, you do run on the chains. Look at that. <laughs> that's... That's okay. That's nice that they actually just warped me to the observatory since I killed the, the master. Mm -hmm. So now you're not going to have to work your way back through the treetop part, right? It remains unclear. I would hope not. Hey, Elena, have I got some good news for you. Well, Hold out a tooth. <laughs> now look, you're just going to have to trust me on this. Do you think whenever she says back, she like looks jokingly at her husband before she says it? It's like, well, it looks like you made it. Back. Back. <laughs> and he kind of laughs. Yeah. <gasps> Elena. Got some flesh for you. Aaron, I'm so glad. I'm out to play. <laughs> Just tap three brains together. How about say. we chat first? What's up with you, Elena? <laughs> You're gonna hold this master flesh oh, hostage. Elena, come on! I know you. You see the master flesh? I'm just gonna <laughs> get to know you, okay? Guys, it's always Master Flesh this, Master Flesh that with her. Alright. What about my flesh, Elena? <laughs> <laughs> I have <laughs> <these. laughs> Oi. That was weird. That was a weird thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hope it 
Please translate it. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying about this whole um, JRPGs gradually not happening much. Because, right? like Sooner or later, it's going to run out. And yeah, then according it'll... to Wikipedia, there were one, two, three, four, five, six that were released in 2012. See? Yeah. I could play six games in a night. <laughs> yeah. Although I always... Whenever I go on, like, Gamefly, there's always, like, coming out soon, random Japanese title, X5. And it's like, well, yeah. is, that on, is that on Wikipedia? I'm not sure. I bet. <laughs> I bet it is. It probably is. She seems we'll, okay. we'll just assume it is, for the sake of... <laughs> okay, sake Elena. Of just don't freak out. Everybody's first experience with the Master Flash is a little... Mm-hmm. Gets just a little this... heavy. Just, just brace yourself. I'm. I got this tooth, and we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get that shit out of you. Oh, you come back, I see. Please pray to the gods. Okay. Ask them to bring okay. This is a little incomprehensible. <laughs> this is the backstory. What's that? Probably. What? <laughs> What? Good question, there. <laughs> Aaron looks like such a dolt. <laughs> That's the way it normally goes with these games. Yeah. The lady you're trying to save seems kind of alright, but then the guy saving her is a total tool. Yeah, I don't, like... Like, who, who, like, it, what's a cool character design for the protagonist of a JRPG? Because, like... I feel uh, like Chrono and don't... Chrono Trigger. That's that's true. Because they don't try too hard. That's the thing. Like Yunarukami. Squall doesn't come off as cool because they you, try way too hard. You Narukami, the yeah. coolest character design, always has his hand in his pocket. Yeah. Minato's or even Monado. Monado's yeah. Monado's even cooler. Monado spends cool more designs. time with his hand in his pocket. That's true. <laughs> Monado doesn't fucking. The fact take that they acknowledge that is pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're good. Thank you. Yeah, Chrono's pretty damn cool. The husband. What? What? Who's the Chrono Cross main character? Uh, Surge. Is he cool? He's. He looks a little like Chrono. He's got yeah. that sort of orangish, reddish hair. He looks okay. okay. Mhm. Mm uh, Lynx is way cooler. The villain of Chrono Cross. He's like a fucking cat man. Oh. Okay. Okay, Elena. I really want to give you some gifts. So you, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it down straight for you, Evan. I really miss Starkey. Yeah, Starkey was pretty great. Starkey's just Olimar. Because <laughs> oh, you yeah. meet you meet Starkey. It's this alien optional character in Chrono Cross. And Starkey's on this island, and he's an alien with like a, a, a space helmet on. And he looks kind of like Olimar, and his whole thing is that he, he lost his ship parts and he needs to find them to go back to his home planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's Olimar. It's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here. Okay, honestly, all I have for... Okay, Elena, listen. I didn't mean to hype this up too much. But I have I this... I love lamp. I have this lamp. That's now, up. are you going to be playing MMORPGs? Uh, if if they're still out, if they were made in Japan, I will play them to the end game. Wow, I thought you would just say no, or just like we'll do a a quick video of it. No, now if that were... could be interesting because that's something I could participate with you. In. Yeah, yeah, we could theoretically all participate with you. In. So I guess Final Fantasy eleven and fourteen. <sighs> And and Dragon Quest uh, Ten online. Obviously, if they go offline, then I can't really do that. But... They re they really missed an opportunity to have Elena wink at you when she said <laughs> that thing. Lamp. See, this is great though. As like as like a tentacle sprouted out of her shoulder. <laughs> uh, I could probably use some more Master Flesh. Conquering the curse. Beast Flesh counters the curse. No <sighs> shit, Pandora's Tower. This is the only line of dialogue anyone has ever said to me in this game. Is that Beast Flesh counters the curse. I don't need to pick up a fucking journal that also tells me that. It's fair. It's fair. Uh, so that was a note Elena wrote. Oh, God.
dude, there's a lot of fucking JRPGs. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I'm gonna beat all of them. Yeah? I mean, if I can before I die. Obviously, yeah, that's that's the only concern I have. Obviously, I don't doubt your resolve. I just doubt the, the, your body. Your, actual your longevity. Living, <laughs> living, <laughs> your I, I think Evan also doubts it because he always says he's going to be dead in ten years. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, you probably won't then. Or we can always just pass on the mantle. That's true. I'll probably have a son by then. <laughs> my son can take up my cause. It'll um, get done. This is I'll, this is mother one. I never I'll met be, my mother. <laughs> I'll be the peppy to your son, Star Fox. Yeah, there you go. So wait, you'll still be around? Well, I mean, in ten well, years. We're though, gonna, obviously, we're gonna outlive you, Evan. That, that would be really weird smoking. if my son became the time captain and it was still just like old Ryan and old Matthew. <laughs> Would we we both ha or or we both have sons? Yeah. Although actually, I like that idea better. That it's just <laughs> two old people. Whatever. I'm just gonna upload my brain onto a computer in 50 years like, and live forever. Your son wants to. Your son really wants to not do it anymore. And we're like, look, kid. It was your father's dying wish. Your father fucking died for your freedom. Now that's the thing with uploading your brain to a computer. Like, is that even possible? Like. Uh, I, I've been lit. Because well, I can definitely see, like, putting your brain in something, but your actual mind... Let me, sure let, me tell, let me tell you this, then. Yeah. Uh, I've been listening uh, to a lot of, recently, the, uh, the science radio show and podcast, uh, Radio Lab. Okay. It's all about science, cool. presented in sort of a... Sort of a, a stirring, like, like, visually engaging, like, radio drama way. Okay. It's pretty cool. I recommend it. And uh, they had a guy on who claimed that he sounded sort of like a crackpot, so it might not be true. Okay. And the host seemed pretty skeptical of him. But he claimed that the main... He cited a couple other things, but the main burial, barrier between us being able to upload our minds onto, like, a computer mm -hmm. uh, is that no computer has enough space. Huh. But that would change. Yes. So he he thinks this guy thinks well, doesn't he, he will be able expand, like infinitely inwardly. What was that? Doesn't the mind like expand like inwardly? Like, I don't continuously think... like. I, I don't think so. I think there's definitely a cap on the brain size. Yeah, I think like you. Doesn't the brain even like shrink after a certain age? I, I feel like. Yeah, but he. He thinks that in his lifetime he will be able to upload his brain onto a computer hmm. and live. I guess. I guess my only concern is metaphysical. Right. Yeah. Well, he also says that like the hosts bring up the idea of, you know, that's not you. What if there's an imperfection? And he's like, well, that's not. It is you though, because like if you hit your head on a coffee table, that kills brain cells. And just because those brain cells are gone doesn't mean you forget who you are. Yeah, so but we can a, have that if, discussion all day. If there's a slight margin of error uh, in the... Uh, keep pulling the lever. In the copy process, you'll still probably remember everything about you. It's just a couple of your brain cells will be dead. The ones that you hit your head on the coffee table with. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, there's also the old... Um, the old, like, uh, sock analogy. It's like having a hole in your sock. Where if you patch up a hole that's in your sock, and then you keep patching up every hole in your sock until the sock itself is composed of patches, well, I don't is think that I the don't same think sock? I think the idea is you wouldn't need to ever patch up the hole in the sock. Right. It, it's like, like it's just a one-time thing, and then yeah, it's like if the sock were so big and the hole were so small that you couldn't detect it, and it was just the same old sock. I see. I see. And it does and change the sock in any important way. Yeah, it's just still a sock, you know. Hey, look, it's Uncharted. <laughs> Pandora's Tower. Your At least move. you won't have to play those. Your move, Uncharted. That's a JRPG, yeah. Yeah. I said at least you won't have to. Oh, I thought you I said that. you're gonna have to. <laughs> you couldn't have to play. Uh, Uncharted 2 is pretty good. Yeah. It's okay. It's not yeah. better than The Last of Us, but, you know. No. No, it's not. It's not even close to better than The Last of Us. Yeah. 
Un I mean, Uncharted 2 does have some good, some good. Uh, oh sure, it does. escalations. It's got it's got room to breathe. You kind of. I the think ending, in retrospect, I like it a bit more. The ending is garbage. Oh yeah, totally. Um, but it's sure it's shit a lot better than Uncharted 1 and 3. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with that. Although, funnily enough, I think the best part of Uncharted 1 was the end, so... Yeah, I never yeah. got just to a, Just end. in terms of a straight... Because that's when they introduced the, uh... They kind of, like, zombies that kind of, like, crawled and skittered on the walls and stuff. Right. Which, which you know, kind of wrote at first, but then they sort of... In, they interact with the uh, other enemy AI, and that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So at least there was that, yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, I'm not really a fan of the font in the Uncharted games, so I can't. I can't this is really... the thing, on the podcast while you were gone, Ryan, we were talking about Lightning Returns. And I was saying all of this excoriating shit about Lightning Returns, and Clint was like, what do you think of the font? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know, I think the font is fine. And he's like, I think the font is terrible. And I was like, do you realize what you're doing? <laughs> do, you, do you realize that I've played ten hours of this shitty game you haven't touched, and now you're complaining to me about the font? <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, well, the font's the same in all the Final Fantasy XIII games. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> I think valid. it's okay. It's valid. Clearly, I don't have the refined... Uh, Refined kind of stylistic palette that he does. You're one of those assholes that likes Comic Sans, aren't you, Evan? Yes. And in comics, in video games, in comics, I don't think Comic Sans even works in comics. Yeah. I mean, it Let's does. That's what, that's what it's for. That's yeah, it's but it's not. Comic Sans. No, it's not. <laughs> it just says Comic Sans. It doesn't mean it's for comics. I yeah. feel like Watchmen would lose some of its gravitas if it was in Comic Sans. Like I'm just saying. <laughs> I think there's a difference between like Watchmen and other comics. I, I feel like, you know, sort of the darker tone something like Batman goes for would, would lose some of its gravitas. Right. If, like, I'm not the Joker's saying, cutting I'm, off Robin's face, it's in Comic Sans. I'm not Sans. saying 100% of comics works, like, Comic Sans works with that. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, Comic Sans has its place in comics, if not, like, nowhere else. Maybe. I mean, that's what, that's what you say. <laughs> that's accurate. But I don't have another thought to that. I have to keep pulling this lever to make the thing go up. Yeah, but you're making progress. I am. I'm now in the how next big, tower. How tall is this tower? I don't know. 13 floors or 13 areas. Oh, okay. I okay. can't. I think I went to a different tower. Was oh, it a different there's... tower or was it like a different section of it? I. It was unclear. I think I was talking about uploading your brain to a computer. <laughs> yeah, that was sort of an interesting discussion. That I'll we... find out right now. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Give me those copper coins. You know it. You know it. Okay, no, they totally are 13 different towers, it okay. seems. Yeah. That's somehow, like, less ex exciting to me than making my way up one giant tower. Oh, they but, are, Evan, um... Evan, I, uh, while we were playing Pandora's Tower, I found a, a metaphorical tower for us to explore. What might that be? The grand list of console role-playing game cliches. We can check them all. Okay. Yeah. Let's hear them. Yeah. There's there's plenty. So. Yeah. There's 192. Okay. So. Um. The um. Ahead, so I actually was correct in that um, like each chain leads to a different section of Pandora's Tower, and Pandora's Tower is the mass of 13 towers that are collected. Together. Okay. Okay, I guess that sort of okay. counts. Okay. So you're just going to, like, the next tower over, pretty much, but on that same thing that all the chains link to. Got it. So it's just 13 dungeons, basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. I, uh, I do, I, okay, this first one seems pretty accurate to me. Uh, one, sleepyhead rule. The teenage male lead will begin the first day of the game by oversleeping, being woken up by his mother, and being reminded that he slept in so late he missed meeting his girlfriend. That is fair, yes. Yeah. 
actually happens in Mother 3, more or less. So. Yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. It happens yeah. in Chrono Cross. Yeah. It happens in Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Evan, we're going to have to play all of the Monster Rancher games. <laughs> what the fuck are those? Uh, are those really RPGs? Wikipedia lists them as RPGs. Okay. And life simulations. Oh, sure, yeah. just pile, pile them on. I, we're going to play all of them. <clears throat> yeah. I okay, don't want wait, people to think I'm just I'm just fucking saying that. It's gonna happen. I don't care yeah. if our episodes have to get two hours long. <laughs> only some of them are That listening. doesn't doesn't change the time in which it takes to play them, I don't Well yeah, but I could play them faster before dying. What right. I'm what I'm saying I is guess. if I if I continue hitting this half hour per day thing, I'll feel less pressure. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, what I'll do is that for each one of these Pandora's Tower videos, I'll, I'll uh, dole out four of these 192 <laughs> okay. cliches at random points throughout the video. We can talk about them. That sounds and if good. I happen to go uh, under that, I'll, I'll make up for it in the next video. Uh, so the second one is, No, my beloved peasant village, the hero's hometown, city, slum, or planet will usually be annihilated in a spectacular fashion before the end of the game Zeno and Gears. often before the end of the opening scene. Bravely Zeno default. Yeah. Bravely default, so you know, Gears. Um, yeah. So, Evan, I was wrong. There's only actually one Monster Hunter, or, I mean, sorry, Monster Rancher. We're going to have to play all the Monster Hunters. But um, <laughs> there's only one Monster Rancher that is listed as an RPG along as a, like, also, beside being a life simulator. Are they functionally okay. identical games, though? That's the question. Yeah, because at that point, it's like... At that point, we get into some weird shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, Wikipedia only lists one of them as an RPG, so... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Did, did yeah. she eat up the beast flesh? Uh, she did before, but it seems like... He's as tough as they come. It's... Then you fall down a tower. <laughs> I think that was just a scripted thing to happen once I broke one of the chains like I just did. Yeah. I do love all the ironic cuts, you know. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, Buffy? He's got a lot of fucking ironic cuts. Yeah. It's like in every episode, there's like, Buffy's attentive and, and one of the best people I know. And then she's sleeping in class and it's like, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, so Buffy <laughs> falls into that uh, sleeping trope. <laughs> first ep I believe the first episode of Buffy has her waking up in her house to go to school. Uh, yes. She wakes up and like her mom is like, you gotta go to school. You're a vampire slayer, but I don't know that till like season four. Season two. Season two. Wait, season two? Oh, yeah, that's the finale, dude. That's where all the shit happens, where, like, she has to run away. Right, I mean, that's not... Yeah. To be clear, I don't know that that's the defining... When people think of the season two finale, I don't know well, that... Uh, right, well, that's that's when where Spike comes in <laughs> to meet her mom. Yeah, no, I, I remember that now that you're telling me that. Yeah. Obviously, I thought that happened later. What I'm saying is the okay. defining aspects of the season two finale do not involve her. I wonder if uh, yeah, that yeah, Vampire sure. Academy movie is anything like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, Probably sure in some really superfluous ways. I'm sure it's just as good. Yeah. Evan goes to see it. This is just as good. Wow. <laughs> Action. Well, let's be honest, Clint is excitement. probably going to end up liking Vampire Academy. You know, what's not bad, Mel? Yeah, let's not. Wait, <laughs> why? Like, come on. Like, why no, I'm... The man is aware of his shitty taste. <laughs> no, I know. I don't know. No. There, there are some parts of Teen Wolf where it sounds like he's actually saying that there are good things about it, and maybe he's right. But also, no, it is getting Clint, a bunch of. It does get B pluses and A minuses from the. Yeah, TV a lot show. of things do. Then again, Walking Dead does so. Yeah. Clint um seems to like like one of the things he enjoys more so than the rest of us are um those types of like shows, especially that have supernatural elements to otherwise like normally set shows right K kind of like um sleepy hollow i think it's called yeah yeah stuff so that sort of thing i don't know i just figured maybe vampire academy is something clink would be into well i hear it's a bad movie so hopefully I, you wouldn't be into it uh, hopefully not then i just actually haven't heard anything about it so um all right cliche number three thinking with the wrong head high row rule no matter what she's accused of doing or how mysterious her origins are, the hero will always be ready to fight to the death for any girl he met three seconds ago. 
that does uh, that's happen. sometimes true, yeah. 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 Ring a bell. <laughs> well, sure. There is a lot of, like, the guards, like, see, like, this girl, like, the character sees him chasing, like, the girl, and then he's like, there, oh, yeah. there don't is do a very, that. Like, and then, well, I, I, want, I want her to just, like, stab the guy that saves her afterwards one of these days. <laughs> And then we're there like, oh, is a fuck. very uh, self-aware <laughs> kind of moment of that in Fire Emblem Awakening, with the introduction of two characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Okay, well, I'm sort of at a loss as to where to go because so basically, here's what happened. Mm -hmm. I went to this one place. They were like, "Hey, here's a chain." I uh, I cut the chain, and then they said, "Chains remaining one." So clearly there's another chain somewhere. Then I hit a ladder, which let me back down into the starting area. All right. Can you go up that ladder and, like, back out, and is there a second way to go? Yeah, that's what I'm going to try now. Because I thought maybe there was just a second door. Also, there's, like, some stones up here that almost look like you can jump up them or something. Yeah, I know. I, I went down them to get onto this. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I thought you came through that door. So No, no, I went went up here. Okay gonna go up here again though I don't have anything better to do wait then what is what's oh that's that like empty room that's yeah right. this looks right yeah this this seems this seems above board oh man this inventory limit is really <laughs> I wonder if you can expand that at all because I don't have any sense of what I should keep and what I shouldn't you can, I'm I'm gonna guess sticky mud is not something. Okay, it's probably for something. There also seemed to be like a very like endless supply in just the beginning of this best, place. Best weapon in the game, probably all sticky mud. But I'll that's uh, fine. I'll look on the Pandora's Tower wiki about sticky mud. Are there different weapons in this, or is it just my one sword that I up? No, there are different weapons. Okay, maybe that'll help. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it will, though. I mean, when I just zone out and focus on, like, the... the sort of puzzly aspect of it, it's not... Right. It's just sort of an inoffensive, like, Zelda type, you know? Yeah. Um, not sure. But... Combat could use some work. Not to say the combat in, uh... In Zelda's oh. particularly scintillating. Along time. with the sword, you you will eventually find throughout. Um, Do I get actually, a bow? You, no, you get a you get twin blades, a military scythe, and <laughs> an explosive stake. A military scythe, huh? Yeah. And actually, the uh, explosive stake is you can get that in this uh, tower you are in now, but you need a crimson key. Mm, yeah, I don't have one of those. I keep running into doors that that need keys, though. But um, the Crimson Key is a key that can only be bought from Mavda after you finish the game. Oh. So so that's a new game plus thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have... Okay, well, I'm lost. But here's the good news about me being lost. So this is the end of the episode. Okay. Um, okay. Wait, let me round off this last trope. Then. Okay, yeah. Uh, the aforementioned mysterious girl will be wearing a pendant that will ultimately prove to be the key to either saving the world or destroying it. That certainly seems accurate to me. I think it's they're called, getting... This is called the Cubic Zirconium Corollary. I, I agree. Do they have examples? Um... Yeah. Because I, I agree know. that's in that's in some very popular JRPGs, but I think they might be dipping their toe into a Yeah, because cause that cause that ultimately is a cliche that has to have another cliche. Right. Yeah. It's like to um, even qualify it. I don't know. I don't well I'm saying right, that I, one's don't a think, I don't think there are as many cliches as people as people say. <laughs> it is true there are I can think of a couple different games where that happens, where there's a pendant and a yeah. thing that... But, you know. Whatever. Whatever. It's all good. I'm Time Captain Evan, joined as always by Space Quartermaster Ryan. Hey, yo. Virtual Stowaway Matthew. Hey. Uh, tune in a couple days from now when we continue our playthrough of Pandora's Tower. Hopefully I'll get unlost, and hopefully we'll be able to save Elena. Until then... JRPG Historia Future Perfect. Deactivate!
Bye. Oh, thought we were doing that. Well, I, I thought you would, and then I'd just say bye. Well, I thought we would do it in unison, like the synchronicity. Did, mm. did you forget about the synchronicity? Yeah, I, I just <laughs> think that we should reserve that for special moments. Well, what, what the fuck was a special moment last time? Evan I, getting I mean, fed up with Pandora's Tower? No, I just think that... It, Doing it in and of itself is a special moment, and if we do it every episode, then it's not going to be special. But I thought that could be, like, our thing. Well, I mean, it could be our thing. It could just be, like, a rare thing. Well, why does it need to be special? Because because it's why more fun it that way. Why can't it be the thing we do? No, it's less fun. Because it's not distinctive. It's not, like, the thing we do. It's just the thing we do sometimes. I, I disagree, but... The loop. loop. Okay. You get that up. You get that on tape. Evan. <laughs>